You know, every so often in the world of tech, a single research paper drops and it sends these huge ripples through the entire community. Well, we just had one of those moments. It's called the Baby Dragon Hatchling Paper. And folks, it is making some of the absolute boldest claims we have seen in a very long time. Okay, let's just dive right into the deep end here. Right there, in the abstract, the authors make this unbelievable claim. They're not just saying, hey, we built a slightly better AI. No, no. They're saying they have bridged the gap between the transformer, that's the architecture that powers pretty much all of modern AI, and the most complex computer we know of, the human brain itself. So what in the world is this baby dragon hatchling, or BDH for short? Well, the core idea is an attempt to build an AI that actually reasons more like we do. The paper really hangs its hat on three huge claims, so let's break them down one by one. First up is what a lot of researchers basically call a holy grail problem in AI. See, current models, they're amazing at doing things that look just like their training data. But the second you ask them to apply that same logic to a much longer, more complicated problem, they often just fall apart. The BDH paper comes along and says, we fix that. Now, what's so interesting here is how directly they are throwing down the gauntlet. Chain of thought reasoning, that's the trick that lets models like GPT-4 sort of think step by step. The BDH authors are basically saying, yeah, that whole approach, it's fundamentally broken, it's brittle, and our model is the solution. But this is where the rest of the scientific community kind of hits the brakes. Critics are quick to point out that this term, generalization over time, is pretty fuzzy. How do you even measure that? And maybe more importantly, the paper only compares its model to something on the scale of GPT-2, a system that is ancient by today's standards. It's kind of like claiming you built the world's fastest car by only racing it against a Ford Model T. All right, on to claim number two, and this one is a doozy. It's all about biological plausibility. The idea here is that BDH isn't just supposed to be smart. It's supposed to be smart in a human-like way, with an internal architecture that actually mirrors the neural networks inside our own heads. And this just perfectly illustrates the sheer ambition we're talking about. The authors are suggesting that in building this AI, they might have accidentally discovered one of the secrets to how we, as humans, produce language. That's a claim that jumps right out of computer science and lands squarely in the world of neuroscience. Well, as you can probably guess, neuroscientists are pretty skeptical. They argue that language in the brain involves these vast, incredibly complex networks, and what the paper proposes is a huge oversimplification. And then there's just the massive mismatch in scale. You have the human brain with 86 times billion neurons, and you're comparing it to a model that's orders of magnitude smaller. Any direct comparison at that point is, well, it's a real stretch. And finally, we get to the third and final big claim, that BDH isn't just a small improvement, it's a full-blown revolution. The paper positions this thing as a post-transformer architecture, basically the heir to the throne that has ruled the world of AI for years. But when other experts started looking under the hood, they saw something a little different. Instead of some revolutionary new idea, it looked more like a really clever mix of existing concepts. So more incremental than a paradigm shift. And there's this weird tension, right? The paper says it's biologically inspired, but the whole thing is built to run super efficiently on GPUs, hardware that works in a completely different way than our biological wetware. So beyond just the scientific claims themselves, the way the research was actually rolled out raised some pretty serious red flags for a lot of people in the community. And this table really lays it all out. You've got this lightning fast launch going from a paper to huge press announcements almost overnight, which leaves very little time for proper peer review. Then you see that the company has major partnerships with NVIDIA and AWS, which could create some conflicts of interest. And like we talked about, the decision to only compare BDH to much older models, it starts to look a lot like they were cherry picking the data to make the results look as good as possible. So why does all this matter? Well, it matters because if this whole story feels kind of familiar, there's a good reason. This whole episode fits perfectly into a well-known pattern in technology, the hype cycle. According to just about any analyst you ask, this is exactly where the baby dragon a hatchling paper is sitting right now. They're pointing to the chart and saying, you are here at the peak of inflated expectations. This is that phase where the promises, the marketing, and the excitement just dramatically outrun the actual proven science. And let's be clear, this kind of hype isn't harmless. When these massive claims don't pan out, it can seriously damage the credibility of the entire field. 
it can make funding and talent chase after flashy ideas that go nowhere, and it gives all of us a really distorted picture of what AI can actually do today. Okay, so where does this leave us? With all the skepticism in the air, what's the realistic future for an idea like the baby dragon hatchling? The more sober forecast looks something like this. In the short term, say the next one to three years, don't expect to see BDH powering your favorite apps, but the ideas might inspire other researchers. Now, if, and this is a huge if, these claims can actually be proven at a much, much larger scale, then maybe in three to seven years, it could lead to some new types of AI. And long term, it might be a tiny piece of the AGI puzzle, but it is definitely not the whole solution. So really, when you boil it all down, we're left with two completely different stories playing out at the same time. Ultimately, the story of the baby dragon hatchling is also the story of science itself. And it leaves us with this really critical question. In an age of such incredible AI advancement, what do we actually need more of? Do we need the bold new dragons that come with massive hyped up claims? Or do we need the careful, methodical dragon trainers who guide this powerful technology forward responsibly? The future of AI is probably going to depend on finding the right balance between the two.